I have taken um, images based on um, water element, the with different ways in which water manifests in terms of uh, what we take for granted, the rain that falls, the ocean we kind of walk, you know, we come out of our mother's womb and then we walk out and we see the ocean and we go, oh, you know, oh, beautiful. And all of these things, I think, and I had the opportunity to work with some scientists and to collaborate with them and to come at MIT and to hear, hear their views and to look at their data and discuss their data. And these were oceanographers. And I remember that in a profound way informed a lot of what I started to do about 10 years ago. Um, so I started to reflect um, on not only the deep ocean or water element, but sonics or sound and color. Color, I think, has a lot to do with sound. Um, I think psychologically, I can hear sound through color, color, basically. I think people like Kandinsky and so on also are related to do that. And, um, and finally, um, these works are meant to be somewhat simple, um, taking a simple element of rain, um, marks, mark making when it comes to the formal aspect, and create a simple abstract painting with minimal, a minimal use of, 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 of a, a certain kind of line or uh, linear direction about how these lines relate to each other or marks, and to conjure up temperature. Because I think the information and what we, 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 we make, our narratives come from that embodiment that we have had since childhood, yeah. and possibly um, beyond childhood, maybe coming from our grandparents and our ancestors, you know, uh, the young, young theory of archetypes, you know, the, the idea that things might come a certain knowledge to us. Yeah. I mean, so there are a lot of things stored up that, that we can work from. We don't have to be conscious of those things. Much information and, and mark on our imagery comes from not necessarily logical, so philosophical ideas. They're, they come from very unconscious ideas as well. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of information. You know, so you, you just have to find a way to unlock it and to start shaping it into it. Yes. And then when you finish, then you say, oh, that's yeah. what next. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the rain falls and we try to catch it with a container. Yeah, I was looking at the museum with the containers that were at the museum today, and we 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 make something to contain something that is transcendental. The idea of nature and, and these phenomenal things that take place in nature, <coughs> we want to contain it, so we make a, a jug, yes. or we create a vase, and and we have this thing to catch the water. And I think, in a way. Um, the painting becomes that kind of conduit. It becomes a, the 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 canvas becomes this this way of containing that universe. Right? Well, the best of, 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 of feelings, yeah. of intuitions, of, of intuition, of, 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 of the literature we've read, the the conversation we've had, okay. the, um, the fears and the emotion, the temperature that we've felt, the cold and the warm, and, and the shift from you know, one extreme to another, and so on and so forth. And I, I love intuitively. So this type of thing is closer to music, in a sense. That it's more abstract and intuitive rather than... Uh, okay. Yes, it's, it's, it's very linked to music as well. I, I listen to a lot of very interesting music when I paint. <laughs>